Hey everybody, it is Mike from Baltimore Rides here. Saturday, September 16th, but this is my Friday wrap-up video for the 15th of September. Um, pretty good night. I'm actually very, very happy with everything. Um, the Uber app was running a little bit weird tonight, guys. I'm sure some of you noticed it if you were out on the road today. Um, if you had earned your Monday through Thursday quest, it was actually loading in today's earnings, so you kind of had to be a mathematician and uh, back out that quest money. It wasn't, it was showing up weird. So, um, and, but they've got messages out there that they know there's kind of a technical glitch problem with quest going on. I don't know why it is, but maybe it's because they're rolling out, you know, quest more frequently or who knows. Um, you know, tech support is definitely an issue with Uber. So, but other than that, guys, it was a great night. Um, I got down in the city, I don't know, I would say about four o'clock ish, and, uh, you know, just a good night. I took the back roads again. I kind of have come up with a new route to work. I, um, I get on the Beltway and then I get on 70 and I take 29 South, um, which is basically Georgia Ave, all the way to DC. And I set my destination for like U Street or, you know, just somewhere down in that vicinity. Um, and typically when I get into, you know, when I get into those, that suburb area, when I get on 29 where the traffic lights start, you start to get rides, you know. So I've gotten a couple ride requests, you know, along the destination path um, doing that. So, you know, again, trying to find value and trying to make profit um, you know, while the wheels are turning is always a good thing. So it's worth doing. Um, but, you know, got into the city. I made some, uh, you know, had some good trips early. The airport was, uh, was, it was on my mind. I kept trying to get towards the airport, but uh, rush hour and, you know, the, the business of the city was just keeping me active. So I never really got to the airport except, you know, later in the evening. Um, I finished the night not counting any quest money at uh, like 2.07 for Uber and then I did about $15 in Lyft trips. Um, I actually had three Lyft trips kind of the middle of the evening like 9 to 11 p.m. was kind of it slowed down a little bit. And so I had Lyft running a couple times there when there was a little bit of a, a void. And I got a couple trips out of it, nothing terrible. Um, but you know, Uber's very, very strong in the city. I'm actually not complaining at all. I used to feel like, you know, Lyft was, uh, was bigger in DC. And it might be steady, I, it really might be. Um, but I don't earn any incentives with Lyft for one. So I'm not gonna, you know, switch to something that I'm not getting any kind of bonus incentives on. Um, and Uber's steady, guys. It's it's honestly very steady, steady to the point where there's, you know, periods of time where I feel like I'm holding my bladder and I'm gonna pee myself so bad, you know, because I've just been on the road nonstop without a break. So, you know, and that that may have been a little bit of a weird thing there, but it's late at night and my brain's mush. But, you know, that's the truth, guys. Like, that's one of our occupational hazards is, you know, we just get rolling, especially when you're rolling, you know, back to back to back to back trips. And the next thing you know, three hours have gone by and you've drank a cup of coffee and your body's telling you it's time to, uh, you know, to drain off some excess fluid. So, you know, it, whatever. But I know that's a strange topic that we've kind of got onto. But um, that's a good problem to have, is what I'm saying. You know, when you're busy, that's a great problem to have. So, um, you know, I'm fine with being predominantly Uber and just getting a couple lift trips here or there. It's some nights it's more than others. You know, last night we did, uh, I did about 60 bucks in Lyft. Tonight, $15, whatever. Um, I've got, uh, I got 22 rides today for you know, like I said, just over $200 and um, I'm fine with that. It's not a great average. I mean, you guys can do that math. It's, it's definitely not a great average. Um, it's about a $10 fare, you know, 10 would be 200. Um, so it's probably like, you know, 
875 or some something crazy like that but you know I've got to do 65 trips between Friday Saturday and Sunday to get this extra hundred dollars or hundred and ten dollar quest so I plan on doing that I plan on getting my 200 a night but I also plan on getting to the quest so that you know um, you know I could pick up the bonus money again I didn't get the higher goal the Monday through Thursday higher goal because they dropped it on me and I took, you know, Monday off and then I did my half day on Tuesday in, in Maryland. So, again, I was kind of behind the eight ball on that one, but um, I plan on getting this one. So I'm not leaving money on the table that I, that I can avoid. So all in all, guys, another great night. Um, I'm feeling very, very happy about the way the week's shaping up. And um, even though a couple of the nights this week have been a little bit soft, it's, um, it's definitely been a good week. So I feel that uh, the city's settling into the fall kind of mode. And that's a lot of college rides, a lot of uh, nighttime kind of bar restaurant scene. The airport has been very steady. So, you know, I'm, I'm just generally very happy with driving in D.C. I really am. Um, I think I might have gotten one red light ticket this week. It was a couple days ago. So it'll be curious to see how they show up. With this being an Uber lease, um, I remember when they were going over the paperwork with me, it eventually, you know, the ticket's going to go to Uber and then eventually it's going to trickle its way back to my account. So I've just got to keep an eye on that. And then what they do is they just add it to my payment. Um, you know, for whatever the week that they apply it. So we'll have to keep an eye on that because I know these red light tickets are pricey um, and just see how that pans out. But I, I think it's only the one. So I have not gotten my court date for that stupid ticket I got in Montgomery County going home that one night a, a week or so ago. But I'm planning on getting away with that. I, you know, I'm going to go to court and argue it and at least get the points off. So even if I do end up having to pay the stupid $40 ticket uh, or $80 ticket, whatever it was. So, you know, it's been a pretty good night, guys. My only real concern is, and I'm just going to vent at this point, but, I, you know, it's an idea that I had that I wanted to run by you guys is as if you're doing late night bar scene driving, this is what you want to use as a just a kind of golden rule um, you know, when you pull up to their pickup location, don't stop right where the pin is. Okay. Pull up four, maybe even five car lengths, you know, away from that pin. Now here's why. Because you're thinking to yourself, well, Mike, why would I not want to be as close to where my GPS pickup is? Because late at night, let's call it 11, 12 p.m. on, you're going to start getting inebriated people riding home from the bar. Now, if you're, if you pull up and they're already at the curb, you've only got five feet between you and them. That's not enough time for you to really get a look at these people and see how bad they are. But if you pull up and then you, you're, you know, you scoot forward a couple car lengths, um, maybe to find a better place to park that's safer for them to load um, into your vehicle, you get to watch them walk for about 20, 30 feet. And sometimes that, that little bit of information is priceless. If you see somebody bobbing and weaving and staggering and barely able to walk in a straight line, then that's a really good person to ask when they get in the vehicle, hey, are you gonna puke? Do you feel nauseous? Um, you know, you've had a lot to drink tonight. Or if you see somebody being held up by their, you know, their partner, friend, spouse, whatever, that tells you that that person might be at risk of puking. And you got to be, you know, vigilant, guys. You've got to be ever vigilant with those kind of people because all it takes is one barf to ruin the rest of your night it pretty much shuts you down. I mean, I don't care if you have paper towels, if you have Windex or, you know, whatever kind of wipes you've got in the back in your trunk and your little bucket of cleaning supplies, you know, it's going to shut you down. That seat's going to be wet. You're going to, you know, you're going to lose time, which means you're going to lose money. Um, 
So, you know, having your spider senses and kind of having your eyes on these people, watching them walk to your vehicle might give you that little extra bit of information that tells you, say, hey, you know what, bud? You look like you're gonna barf. I don't think I'm gonna take that chance. Um, and just stop the ride right then and there and just cancel the trip before they even, they even get in and you start it. Um, and on that note, guys, don't start trips until all of your people are in the car. Let me just pause for effect here. Don't start trips until all of the passengers are in the vehicle. Had one today, pulled up, lady came out, two little kitties. One could not walk and one was maybe four tops. Hey ma'am, I am sorry. I have not even started your trip yet, but uh, I do not have infant car seats and uh, you know if you don't have a car carrier for that little guy I cannot take him in and she got very upset hey that's not the policy if you're a taxi the law is different um, you know blah 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 I've never had a problem with Uber before I said ma'am I'm sorry I'm just going by the Uber policy that I was taught I've only been driving for four or five months but this is the rules as Uber has made it clear to me um, what other drivers do or don't do is their own business, but I can't take a chance of, uh, you know, getting a fine or a ticket or losing my license or being deactivated with Uber because I violated policy. So um, this is my livelihood. So I apologize, but I'm going to have to cancel your ride request. And here's the difference. If you start the trip and cancel, you're not going to get a cancellation fee. You're not. Doesn't matter what reason, you're not. But if you cancel the trip, fraudulent rider, which is what that is, that is a rider that is not able to really get in your vehicle because they did not, they misrepresented themselves. Um, you know, just like a no show, you'll get a cancellation fee. And, you know, and it also, if you start the trip and, and then end the trip, they get to rate you. If you cancel the ride before it ever starts, they don't get to rate you. Now, of course, you still probably want to call and notify them, meaning Uber support, if you have like a car seat issue or something serious. But for the drunk people, just cancel the ride. Cancel the ride. Even if you cancel the ride, do not charge rider, it's still worth it to cancel the ride and not have somebody barf in your car. So, you know, use that sparingly, but definitely be vigilant, guys, because a barf can, can really ruin your night. Um, and I, I do that deliberately. I, I always try and find a safe place to park, um, but I, I always also give myself a little bit of space between me and my passenger so that I can really observe them getting in my car. So I'm going to leave you guys with that little factoid or little important safety tip. Um, because my goal is to be no barf. My goal is to, you know, not have any barfs. So that's my mission and that's what I'm trying to keep to. And so far, so good. Everybody have a great night. I will see you guys on the road tomorrow and uh, get some rest. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye.